One consistent problem we have in landings is floating down the runway. We'd love for the aircraft to be done flying, but it seems to never want to get touched down. The relationship between speed and altitude plays an important role in why floating happens, and can be explained by paraphrasing the words of Wolfgang Longavisha from his book Stick and Rudder. He has a chapter called The Law of the Roller Coaster, which we'll use to illustrate this. We're on final with the throttle all the way back to idle. Let's say a good approach speed for our Cessna is 60 knots, but we take a look at our airspeed indicator on final and we're at 75 knots. We want to slow down. In a car, we could slow down by taking our foot off the gas pedal. Well, in our Cessna, the throttle's all the way back to idle. In the car, we can also step on the brake, not an option in our Cessna. This is where the instructor will start telling you to slow down, and you're rightly getting confused, and so do nothing and the plane keeps descending at 75 knots. A better thing to have said is, bring some back pressure on the control and get the nose up. This is how we'll slow our airplane down. When the throttle is all the way back, we can think of our aircraft like a roller coaster. In order to keep the same speed, we have to sacrifice altitude and descend at a certain steepness. The great thing about airplanes, though, is we can pick the steepness of our roller coaster. We can point the nose down hard and dive, gaining airspeed in the process and sacrificing a ton of altitude, or we could pick a shallow glide, bleeding off airspeed in order to do so. So with the throttle at idle, our speed control is the elevator. We could slow down by pitching up and speed up by letting the nose pitch down. The relationship that develops out of this is between speed and altitude. We could trade away one to get or keep more of the other, and vice versa. Also, we can't get rid of one of these without gaining the other. For example, if we want to slow our aircraft down from 75 to 60 knots, we do so by bringing the nose up more, but this will shallow out our descent, keeping us higher for longer. The effect is that once we're on airspeed, we find ourselves higher than we'd like to be for the approach, and we'll touch down further down the runway than planned. Let's look at the opposite scenario. Let's slow our aircraft down again by pitching up and slowing to 60 knots. Now we find ourselves high as before. Many students will try to correct for this by letting the nose pitch down to lose that altitude and aim closer to the beginning of the runway. But remember the relationship between speed and altitude. We'll lose altitude, but we'll gain speed in the process. Now, if we try to round out and land here, we're going to find ourselves floating back up in the air. All this excess speed will be converted into altitude and will float a good distance down the runway. So in both cases, we found ourselves eating up more runway than planned. When you're some combination of high and fast, there's just no avoiding this. Having altitude gives us options for how fast or slow we want to go. Let's think of having altitude as like having some money, and that money is sitting in a bank. If we make a withdrawal from the bank, we can convert altitude into speed and put some of that money in our hand. We can dive right down to the runway, and now because we carry this much speed, we can convert it back into altitude by pointing the nose up, slowing down and gaining altitude, putting some of that money back in the bank. Now, we want to make sure we don't go broke. In this analogy, going broke would be being low and slow at the same time. We're low, so we don't have that much money in the bank. And we're slow, so we don't have much in our hand to put it back in the bank. Let the nose down, and we'll hit a tree. Pitch up, and we'll slow down, eventually stalling and hitting a tree. Now, in a landing, low and slow is exactly where we want to be. A landing should be made on the main gear at a speed close to stall. In the example before where we came down to the runway with excess speed, in other words we have a bit more money in our hand, we're faced with the problem of an embarrassment of riches. We have to spend this money before the aircraft can land, and that means using up more runway and floating further down. Now there are obviously other tricks in our bag besides just trading speed and altitude. We do have a throttle which we can use to pump some money back into our bank account. On the other side, there are ways we could spend money faster by using air brakes or side slipping or even something simple like making S turns to the runway. But in dealing with fundamentals, think of the trade-off between speed and altitude when thinking about your approach to landings.